What is up, YouTube? It's me, John Avenger, again. Uh, I'm doing a uh, list. This is a list from uh, that's recommended by one of my viewers uh, that saw my best superhero film slash comic book movies that I did back in March. So now I'm going to do the opposite. Now I'm going to do the top ten worst superhero slash comic book movies that I've seen. Remember, this is my list. Not everything that's on my list is going to be on your list of the worst comic book movies. Or some of them may be films that I actually do enjoy that a lot of people don't. That's just the way it is. But I'm going to get started because I don't want this video to be an hour long. So at number 10, we got Ghost Rider 2, Spirit of Vengeance. I thought the first Ghost Rider film, while it had its problems, it was passable. Uh, you know, Nick Cage, I don't think, did that bad of a job. I thought the visual effects for the time weren't that bad. Uh, the action when it was there, you know, I, it, it didn't it didn't offend me that much. Uh, but the second one I thought was freaking terrible. I mean, Ghost Rider looked better in the second film, but I just thought that this movie was done wrong. Uh, you know, Nicolas Cage was too over the top. He's like, he's knocking at the door. And, and you know, the script was awful. I thought the villain was pretty cool. Blackout, he, he was a pretty cool villain in the movie. I didn't care for the guy, actor that played Mephisto that replaced Peter Fonda. I didn't care for him. Uh, the girl was definitely better than Eva Mendes in the first film. I hated Eva Mendes in the first movie. I haven't liked her in a film since. Um, and the movie was just boring. It just You know, you waste Christopher Lambert's talent by putting him in the film for like five seconds and he has nothing to do. Idris Elba I thought was a big distraction for me, just this French pretentious douchebag that I didn't care for. Um, just the movie, just it didn't need a sequel. I mean, if they weren't going to do the, the right the first time, why do a sequel that's even worse? So it gets a thumbs down from me. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. And I didn't even see it in theaters, but yeah, number 10 is Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Okay, number 9, this was more of a disappointment than, a, than like, you know, a horrible film, but... I had to put on the list because looking back on it, it's what's it's what's it's what's wrong with the superhero genre now when they may do you know reboot it and they act like this never happened, but this happened and I suffered through it, and that's X Men Three: The Last Stand. Yeah, Brian Singer not directing this movie was a problem from the get go because when Fox fired him and they got Brett Ratner, the movie was in trouble. I mean, I like some of the visuals in the movie. I think the action when it's there, it's good. And uh, Hugh Jackman is good as Wolverine, but they fucked up the Phoenix uh, Saga just so badly. The Dark Phoenix Saga, it could have been, it was really simple. Turn Jean Grey into the Phoenix. Not, oh, let's make her a split personality, and let's kill off Cyclops, and let's kill off Charles Xavier, and let Jean Grey die at the end for no reason. Why, Br uh, Brett Ratner? Why did you direct this movie? You could have just said no. Uh, you know, the movie was badly written. I mean, I said it was a mixed bag because, you know, there were some things I liked in it, but, man, I just thought that the movie was just lackluster. And the fact that the movie made so much money and that it's because of that movie that we got Origins Wolverine, The Wolverine, First Class, and Days of Future Past. Uh, you know, the first two films were really good. I don't know why they had to fuck it up with this third movie that just... It it really buried the franchise, and it just did never recovered. It was the Alien 3 of this franchise, and uh, I really wish that, you know, it didn't do this. But, you know, I have Avengers, so I'm not really complaining too much, because, you know, X-Men may be hurt now, but Avengers won't get fucked up like this was. I know it won't. And uh, this movie just... It's a thumbs down. I thought it was lackluster compared to the first two films. So that's number nine. Number eight is a very boring Western superhero film slash comic book movie that I saw. And it was so boring. It was short, but it was not good. And that was Jonah Hex. Yeah, this movie sucked. Uh, you know, Megan Fox can't act in the movie. Josh Brolin is giving nothing to do. There's no memorable action in the movie. The movie's too boring. It's very slow paced. Some of the visuals look okay, but it could have been done better. Uh, John Malkovich was wasted as the villain. Uh, Michael, Michael Fassbender gives a bad performance in this movie. The whole thing is stupid that he could talk to the dead. Yeah, that's not interesting to me. Not in, not in, a, in a comic book movie. Uh, just, I'm glad this film flopped. It didn't deserve to be a hit. 
it's a character that no one even knew about. It's, I think, a DC hero. I don't remember. It. I think it was DC, yeah. Uh, no one cared about it. It was an awful movie. Josh Brolin has done better films. Uh, I'm glad he's going to be Thanos in, uh, in Avengers 3. That's going to be infinitely better than this movie. This movie sucks, and I will have nothing else to say about it. Okay, number seven. Now, this is a controversial pick. Uh, no, I did not put uh, Man of Steel. It was disappointing, but I don't think it's one of the worst. Uh, but we'll get to him soon enough. But this movie was boring. I hated every second of this movie. It was not needed, first of all. And that is The Amazing Spider-Man. I know there are fans out there that like this film. Fine. I don't care for this movie. I don't care for the sequel. This is not the Spider-Man that I liked as a kid and as an adult. I just don't care for this Spider-Man. The freaking exposition about Peter's parents, I didn't give a fuck. The new costume, I didn't give a fuck. The new villains, I didn't give a fuck. The new cast, I didn't give a fuck, except for Emma Stone. She was good in the first movie. And in the second movie, I heard she's decent as well. Garfield does not do it for me as Spider-Man. He's boring. Uh, his humor is, like, barely in the film. Even in the second one, you know, he's a British actor playing some Amer you know, an American icon. Why would you give it to some Anglo-American guy? Why? You know, they already have done this with Batman and Superman. Why do this for Spider-Man? It doesn't work. The villains are lame. You know, the, the, in the first film, the lizard, he looks like shit. The CG looks awful. The film, the action scenes are not memorable. The film is way too long. It's like over two hours long. It feels like two and hours and thirty minutes. Uh, the pacing is just off. The origin story, again. Why do we have to hear the origin story a second time? We already heard it in the first Spider-Man, which was good enough for me. Uh, you know, it just, it dragged on, and it was just totally pointless. We already saw this. It was just the first three films merged into one, and the sequel did the same thing. Stop with the boring stu superhero movies, Marvel. I, I blame Sony, not Marvel, because Sony was the ones that produced this film, and it, it sucks. I hated this film. I don't care for this reboot. I don't care for the Sinister Six movie. If Garfield's going to be part of it, yeah, you know, if he's Spider-Man in the movie, you know, just it's it's a universe that we don't need this done this way. They're doing it for the money, and that's why the second one didn't do as well as the first one, and that's why this reboot is not doing as well as the Raimi films. At least the Raimi films were fun and they weren't boring to me. Uh, this film sucked. I hate every minute of this film when when Emma Stone's not on it. The romance is completely forced in some scenes. You know, a lot of people are wasted in this movie, like Dennis Leary. He's a good actor, and he's kind of wasted. He gets killed off. Rice Siphons did not work as Dr. Connors. When did Dr. Connors have a British accent? Huh? He didn't have a, di a British accent in the cartoon. He didn't have a British accent in other forms. He's not British. I'm sorry. The movie just, it's an unnecessary reboot, and it's only made for the money. Batman was necessary, because after 1997, Batman needed re rejuvenation, and I think Nolan, while the, the trilogy is flawed, at least it has, it, it's, it's actually consistent, you know. Uh, this reboot was not, it was boring, it sucked, Done. not looking forward to seeing the sequel or anything else from this. If Spider-Man gets rebooted again... Give it a smaller budget and get a guy that actually can be funny and can act and also can do martial arts and, you know, do, there's some good suggestions, you know. You could make a good Spider-Man movie, but this wasn't it for me. I'm sorry. So, uh, that's enough of that. Um, now, number six is Ang Lee's The Hulk. Wow, this movie was boring. I saw this movie when I was, like, a teenager and I almost fell asleep. The, the first hour of this movie is just talking and talking and talking. And it just, it never ends. The pacing in this movie is awful. It's glacial. Uh, it's just, you know, the action is not memorable. I, I didn't mind when you see the Hulk and he attacks those dogs and when he throws the tank. That was cool. But, but the way the Hulk looked, you know, it just, he looks like Shrek. It doesn't look right at all. It looks like the new Ninja Turtles, that they look like taints, but I'll get to that next time. Uh, this movie bored the shit out of me. Uh, Nick Nolte was awful. You know, at the end of the film when he's talking to Bruce and he's like, ah! I'm like, oh my god, this movie sucks. 
it felt too long. It tried to be like Batman Begins, and it failed. And this was before Batman Begins came out. And it just, it bored me. Uh, I like Jennifer Connelly, but she deserved a better leading guy. Eric Bana, I thought, was boring. He was lifeless. I didn't care for his American accent. I'm sorry, Edward Norton did a better job. Even Mark Ruffalo, with some of the shit he gets, he's still better than Eric Bana. He's not as lifeless, you know. Uh, the you know the the it's just it's a dull, shitty Hulk movie, and it had potential. This could have been an awesome Hulk movie, but they just ran it into the ground. Way too slow, way too boring, way too tedious, and just you know the story didn't interest me. It's a simple concept. It was done better in the Incredible Hulk, and even in the TV series, and even the two Hulk films from the 80s are better. With Bill Bixby, who's the real Bruce Banner, not this guy, this Aussie trying to be American. It just doesn't work. And the ending is the biggest slap in the face I've ever seen in my life. It's just, I'm glad this movie's forgotten. I'll just see Hulk and the Avengers and the Incredible Hulk. I don't need this Hulk. He sucks, and it's boring, and just, I don't want to see it again. Okay, number five. This is another controversial pick, but I'm going to put it because it has superheroes in it, so it counts. And that is the very first Kick-Ass. Yeah, didn't like Kick-Ass. I'm sorry. Matthew Vaughn's directing in this movie didn't do it for me. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, I know he gets a lot of shit for Godzilla, but I thought this was his worst performance because he had more screen time in this and he just is useless in this movie. Uh, he was unlikable. He was a prick. He's like jerking off to his teacher who... While I think the teacher was, you know, good looking, I don't think the movie, you know, it, it's just creepy. You know, some teenage boy jerking it off to his, his teacher is just, it's not something I wanted to see. The sex jokes didn't work for me in the film. Uh, you have wasted potential. Uh, you have Lindsay Fonseca from Nikita, who I absolutely adore in that show as Alex. She's beautiful, but she's underused in the film. Throwing her on Aaron Taylor Johnson did nothing for me. It was very forced. The only good things in this movie are the gore and uh, Nicolas Cage as Big Daddy and Hit Girl, by, played by Chloe Moritz. They were good, but every time Kick-Ass was on screen and he got stabbed or punched or whatever, I'm like, yeah, good. Beat the shit out of this British guy. I don't care about this guy in this movie. In Godzilla, I can tolerate him. I'm sorry. I know... Uh, there's people out there that thought he was wooden and he was a zombie and and uh, you know he was completely unlikable. But I can take him over th this performance. This performance just annoyed me. Him as a lead, uh, the villain was lame. Mark Strong did nothing for me. He's trying to sound Italian. He's the most unconvincing Italian gangster I've ever seen in my life. Uh, just a wasted opportunity. An R-rated comic mo a book movie that could have worked. But it bored me. I wasn't laughing. It wasn't funny. Just very, very stupid. Uh, just a movie, even the opening, when that guy jumps off the building and dies, it's supposed to be funny. It wasn't funny to me. So fuck kick ass in the face. I don't care for the sequel. I don't care for a third movie. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, believe me, hear this YouTube community. He will not suck in Avengers 2. Even if you don't like the actor. Quicksilver is a character I'm not really that into, but I think he'll do better there. Him just running around is more interesting than him using these two sticks, trying to swing it at some guys, and they get stabbed in the ch in the in the stomach. It's just pathetic, and this movie's pathetic. So, Kickass gets a thumbs down from me. I didn't enjoy it. Okay, number four. This is a very obscure uh, comic book slash superhero film that I saw as a kid, and I didn't care for it bad casting choice and that was Steel. Yeah, uh, Shaq is not a good actor. I'm sorry, you know, in this movie he was absolutely horrendous. Uh, you know, him as Steel and uh, the movie was very lackluster. Judd Nelson played a, you know, a very forgettable villain. It, it has a lot of dialogue taken from other films. It's not funny. Uh, the visual effects look horrible. Steel's costume looks faker than hell. Um, just a very boring, you know, unmemorable comic book movie. It could have been done well, because I like Steel as a character, but here it was done all wrong. It looks very cheap. Just a stupid movie. Uh, I don't know why this was even made. I mean, you know, I, if DC had gotten a hold of this property and done it like Green Lantern, it could have been something, but this was a failure on, on all counts. 
avoid this movie. Don't watch Steel. It's a useless movie that wasn't needed. Uh, you could have hired anybody else to play Steel. A freaking Michael Clark Duncan would have been a better Steel. Because he's a good actor and, you know, may he rest in peace. He could have been better than Shaq. I'm sorry. Shaq looks the part, but he doesn't act the part. Because he's a basketball player. That's all he ever will be. An actor? No. Kazam is one of the worst films I've ever seen. And uh, this film didn't help matters either. But anyway, Steel, it sucks. Avoid it. Don't even bother with it. Just goes to watch Superman and uh, watch Steel in the in the uh, Superman cartoon from the 90s. That's a better version of Steel. Okay, now, number three, speaking of Superman, this is the worst Superman I've seen. Even though Man of Steel pissed me off because it was so boring and so long, this one is even worse because it's just, you know, it was done cheap and it sucks. And that is Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Yeah, I wasn't at peace when I watched this movie. I admit, when I saw this as a kid, I watched it a lot for the cheesy factor, but as an adult, it has not aged well at all. It's a very cheap-looking film. It's very boring. The villain is beyond lame, Nuclear Man, some British, like, I don't know, bodybuilder or football player or something that he can't act his way out of a paper bag. Uh, Gene Hackman is phoning it in in this movie. Uh, Margot Kidder is just, you know, she's like out of it in this film, just burnt out playing this role. It sucks that this is the last time we saw Christopher Reeve as Superman. You know, he was really good in the first three films, and I miss him like crazy. And he will always be Superman to me, you know, in live action films. Uh, you know, it's sad that he had to write the story for this movie. I'm sorry, Chris, but this was not a good story for a Superman movie. Uh, you know, the nuclear arms race and other thing, it could have worked. But in the hands of Golden Globus, it did, it failed on all counts. This film deserved to flop. And I'll take Superman Returns over this, because at least that was done better. It didn't look cheap, and I like Brandon Ralph. I'm sorry. Uh, Henry Cavill didn't do anything for me, but Brandon Ralph did. And, you know, it's sad that he only got one chance to play Superman, and I think he did well. But then Christopher Reeve's last outing... It just, it sucks to see, man. It's a wasted opportunity. Just a very cheap film that I never want to see again. I'm sorry for the cast members in this movie, like Marion Heming Hemingway. I like her and other stuff. And I like John Cryer. I think he's a fun actor. But this was just a, an abortion of a sequel. And it sucks after part three, which I, I like part three for what it is. But this was just abysmal and just... It sucks. One of the worst sequels I've ever seen. It killed the Superman franchise, and I wish it had never existed, or we wouldn't have had this reboot. But anyway, Superman 4 sucks. It gets this from me. Okay, number two. This movie is number two because I saw it, like, last year, and it really pissed me off. This was a very big misstep. And I hate every single thing about, almost every single thing in this movie, and that is the spirit. Wow, the spirit was a crappy, crappy movie. How could a movie with a budget this big and with visuals that were actually pretty decent be such a bad movie? This has some of the worst dialogue I've ever heard in my life in a comic book movie. Your lead, G uh, G Gabriel Mach, is awful in this movie. He has no charisma. He's a block of wood. He has nothing cool to say. He's just there to be there. His character completely sucks. He can't even fight or do anything. Uh, Samuel Jackson is awful in this movie. I mean, everything he says is a stupid pun. And he's trying to be funny and it falls flat on his face. I prefer him as Nick Fury because at least he's more taken more seriously there. Uh, Scarlett Johansson, I love her to death, and I, I, I think she's the only actor trying in this movie, but it doesn't save the movie. Uh, Paz Vega, whatever her name is, uh, she, she plays some French chick, that stripper or whatever, I, I wanted to punch her in the face. I'm sorry, no offense towards women there, you know, I'm not a violent person, but, you know, I, she, she pissed me off, she was not needed in the film. Uh, the film is boring, there's no good action, um... Stana Kattuck is in the film. She's from, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, that show, on, I forgot what it was called. No, not Nip Tuck, well, Castle, yeah, with uh, Nathan Fillion. She's good in that. Here, she's completely wasted, very underused. This film is trying to be like Watchmen or uh, 300 or Spin, uh, Sin City, 
and it fails miserably. It deserved to bomb. It's a bad movie. It's just not just a bad comic book or superhero film. It's a bad movie overall. Uh, I'm glad that the critics hated this film. I'm glad that there's no franchise of this film. It's awful. Just avoid this film if you can. If you have not seen it, you think Catwoman is horrible? See this film. This is a big budget film that's even more horrible. I haven't seen that yet, but I guarantee you, I probably would get laughs out of that compared to this movie. This movie was just dull, lifeless, and stupid, and putrid, and one of the worst things I've ever seen. So, The Spirit is number two, just for being a, uh, just an insult to moviegoers everywhere. So, yeah. Now, number one, I bet everybody knows what this is. This is a movie that killed off one of the biggest comic book icons of all time. It was a big budget disaster. It was a, it was dead on arrival. Uh, you know, Schumacher, you should be ashamed of yourself for doing this. And that is number one, Batman and Robin. Yeah. Batman and Robin. What else can I say about Batman and Robin? It killed off Batman, making him a complete joke. George Clooney as Batman is he's playing himself. He's not playing Batman. Uh, Chris O'Donnell, I like them in Batman Forever, but here he's just a bitchy little punk, and I just hated his dialogue. Uh, Uma Thurman, a beautiful actress, is just completely, you know, over the top and cartoonish in this. Arnold, this is his worst performance. Even if I see Escape Plan and Sabotage and they suck, it's not a worse performance than this. This is over the top and hammy and just bad ice puns and just horrible dialogue. His suit looks like Robocop. It's just dumb. The film has some of the worst, you know, puns in the film. It's like a, it's a cartoon. It, it, it's a freaking two-hour toy commercial slash cartoon that makes Batman look like a complete dumbass. Uh, Bane is, is a useless character here. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'll take him in The Dark Knight Rises and laugh my ass off with that Sean Connery voice than seeing Bane... He looks the part, but it just, it, it just, he doesn't even talk. He's just like, boom, and I'm like, oh my god, I hated that. It was so annoying. There's way too many things happening in this movie. Bruce Wayne has some throwaway Auss Aussie girlfriend that, you know, uh, played by Ellen McPher or McPherson or whatever her name is. She can't act in this movie, you know, uh. Just a complete throwaway character. Commissioner Gordon does nothing in this movie. It plays badly, you know, like the way when it starts and you see the freaking cod pieces in your face and rubber badasses and 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 and, uh, you know, and also the nipples. It just it it's a gay fetish. It's so stupid. Schumacher, I don't know what you were thinking putting this in theaters. You know, you should have just tone a lot of stuff down and make it as fun as Batman Forever. At least Batman Forever with the problems it has, it's still a decent, you know, Batman movie. This was a cinematic abortion. One of the worst things ever put on film. Uh, Batman Begins is a hundred times better. Uh, you know, it, it did this movie, I wouldn't say it was boring, it's just, there's a lot of things happening that you don't care for. Barbara Gordon, they completely screw over her, her storyline, you know, so her being related to Alfred, that's not in the comics. Alfred having a disease, and this, it, there's no emotional weight to it. Um, you know, uh, Alicia Silverstone, while she looked hot as Batgirl, just the fact that she's not Barbara Gordon, and she's like Barbara Pennyworth, uh, Pennyworth or whatever, it just, it doesn't work, I'm sorry. Just a stupid movie just completely an insult to as a Batman fan I was insulted watching it as a kid I can watch it but as an adult it's just painful to watch just this movie sucks everybody knows that uh, I can't even call it a guilty pleasure because it's just painful it hurts watching this movie uh, so Batman and Robin is my number one worst comic book movie it's probably no surprise to anybody because nothing could top this I mean I could see comic book movies that suck in the future but they won't be as painful and stupid and, and cartoonish as this but you know those are my top ten worst take it what, for what you will you know you if you have a top ten worst tell me in the in the comment section uh, these movies I, I would suggest if you haven't seen them avoid them at all costs these films suck, they will take time away from your lifespan, and they are big, 
you know, insult, middle finger to you, to all you comic book fans out there that love the comics and love movies, and just, you know, overall, just, in, it's an insult, and that's all I can say about it, so, I hope you guys enjoyed my top 10 worst comic book slash superhero movies, and I will talk to you guys next time.